Hey hi everyone, this is Ramesh from Java Guides. So in this video tutorial we are going to implement JSP so related JDBC MySQL crude example tutorial. So what we are going to build, so in this video tutorial we are going to build a simple user management web application that manages a collection of users. So we basically develop a simple basic features in our user management application that is create user, update user, delete user, retrieve user and list up all the users. So these are the very simple basic features that we are going to implement in our user management web application. Alright, so look at here the screens. So this is the list of users page and here basically the all the users from the database tables are listed here and you can see here add new user button so we can use this button to add a new user to the list and here are edit and but delete button so we can use the edit button to edit the particular user and we can use a delete button to delete a particular user from the list okay and this is the header and here is the users link so we can click on this this link to list out all the users so if you, you are in a add new user page then you you once you click on users link then this link will be navigated to the list of users page okay so this is the add new user page so we can use this page to add a new user to the user list and again look at here the users link so once we click on this link it will navigate to the list of users page so here is the edit user page so we can also edit the user so these are the crude operations that we are going to implement in this video tutorial so add new user edit new edit user delete user and list out the user so these are the crude operations all right so we are going to use a uh, MUC design pattern to develop this web application so I would like to give you a brief overview of MUC design pattern so MUC stands for model view controller and model view controller is a pattern used in software engineering to separate the application logic from the user interface as the name implies the model view controller pattern has three layers so model layer defines the business layer of the application and the controller layer manages the flow of the application and the view layer defines the presentation layer of the application so it's important to understand the tools and technologies that we will be using so let's have a look into the tools and technologies that we that we will be using so we use uh, JSP and Eclipse ID and JDK 1.8 later next we use Apache Tomcat 8.5 to de deploy our web application and we use a servlet and we use mysql connector java uh, jdbc driver to connect to the mysql database using jdbc api so these are the tools and technologies that we'll be using let's have a look into the development steps so i really like this slide because it outlines what are the steps that we are going to implement in this video so the very first is we create a eclipse dynamic web project so once we create the project then we need to add all the required jar dependencies next we create a project structure next we set up the database and next we create a java bin java bin class that is a user and next we create a user dao class so user dao class has all the jdbc code and next we create a user servlet so user servlet will handle all the web requests and next we create a user list JSP page that is user hyper list dot JSP page next we create a user form JSP page that is user hyper form dot JSP page and next we also create our error JSP page and finally we deploy and test our application and we will see the demo so these are the development steps that we are going to implement so first step is create a Eclipse dynamic web project in Eclipse ID. So let's open the Eclipse ID and let us start, uh, you know, developing this web application. So I highly suggest you guys to start coding with me so that uh, you will get a hands-on experience on coding. All right, let's get started. So let's open the Eclipse ID and let's start uh, 
developing the web application so i am in eclipse id so let's create a eclipse dynamic web project so go to the file new and choose dynamic web project and let's give a project name as jsp solid jdbc mysql crude example all right so once you are happy with the project name hit finish so here we go so we created our eclipse dynamic web project all right let us see the next step so next step is we need to add the required jar dependencies so just let me copy the jar dependencies that are required and let me paste in a lib folder so here we go so we are using JSP, Solid, and JDBC and MySQL database. So these are the four JAR dependencies are enough to develop this web application. So you can get these JAR files from my GitHub repository. So I will be hosting source code of this tutorial on my GitHub repository so that uh, you can able to get these JAR fi files from there. All right. Now let us see the next step. Next step is we need to create a project structure. So let's create a packaging structure or a project thing, project structure. So right click on SRC folder new choose package and let's give a project name. Uh, let's give a package name as net dot Java guides dot user management dot model. Next, let's create a one more package and let's name it as a DAO and let's go ahead and let's create one more package and let me uh, give name as a web alright so under model package we keep all the models or java bin classes under DAO package we keep all the DAO classes uh, and uh, under web packages we keep all the controllers that is the servlets all right so this is the simple packaging structure for our web application now let us see the next step so the next step is we need to set up the database all right so we'll be using mysql server so i am going to use mysql workbench as a client for mysql database server all right so let me open mysql workbench here and i will create a database i name it as a demo so let's just uh, write the statement create database demo it will create a new database yeah here we go and i have a ddl script here so we are going to create a users table it has id name email country these are the columns and look at here we are auto incrementing the primary key that is the id and just select the database here demo database and execute this ddl script and let me refresh yeah here we go user table is created great now let's have a look into the next step so next step is we need to create a java bin that is user class all right so again let us switch to the eclipse id and let's create a user class so right click on model package new and choose class and give name as user and let's create a private fields private int id private string name private string email private string country all right so these are the four fields we required so to keep it simple i am going to create only these fields so you are free to use uh, any uh, any you know any fields for this user management web application so let me create a getter setter methods to access these private fields all right so let me also create a parameterized constructor right click source constructor using fields select all 
all right and let me create a one more constructor without id so we are simply auto incrementing the primary key so let's create a one more constructor without id field great so now we have created user java bin class now let's have a look into the next step so next step is we need to create a user DAO class so right click on DAO package new and choose class and view class name as user DAO so this is the user DAO class it has all the JDBC related stuff so we will be creating a crude da a database operations inside this user DAO class alright so Java DAO basically stands for data access object it is a design pattern to separate all the database related stuff into a separate class alright so let's go ahead and let's develop a crude database operations inside this class so so let me write the comments here so that uh, it will be easy for you to understand so this DAO class provides a crude database operations for users table in a database all right so let's create a uh, variables to store jdbc url username and password so here i have defined jdbc url jdbc user and password and this is the mysql jdbc link and demo is the name of the database and username and password now let's create a static sql statement to insert delete update and select users so let me quickly write the code uh, for creating the static sql statements so here we go so this is the insert uh, users sql statement here we use this sql statement to insert users into users table and this is the select user by id uh, sql statement so here we are writing the sql select statement to retrieve a user from the users table by id and this is the select all users sql statement so this will select all the users from the users table and this is the delete users sql statement so this will delete all the users from the users table and this is the update sql statement so this will update a particular user by id okay so here uh, we can update a user with the name email country by using uh, by id all right so these are the uh, sql statements that uh, we need in our code all right let's go ahead and let's define crude methods now for the user so create user create user or insert user next update user select user by id next select users delete delete user so these are the database operations uh, and we are writing a separate method for each database operations all right so let's go ahead and let's write a separate method for each database operations so before that uh, let's create a get connection method uh, which will create a you know jdbc connection with a mysql database so let me quickly write the method here so look at here this is the get connection method so here we basically pass the jdbc url username and password to the get connection method and we get a connection object and we will be using this get connection method in all the respective methods all right so we are basically writing a separate uh, common method and we are reusing this method inside the remaining methods that i will show you a bit later so let's create a insert uh, user method 
public provide insert user and just pass user object as a parameter and here let's use a try with resource statement to automatically close the JDBC resources let's first get a connection call the get connection method to get the connection object and let's create a prepare statement object and pass the insert SQL statement here and uh, what is the compilation error yeah we need to throw the SQL exception alright so look at the insert uh, users SQL statement here are the placeholders so we need to fill these placeholders by setting the values right so here we are using paper statement so we can use paper statement dot set string and uh, one and here just pass the name and prepare statement dot set string and just pass two and just get the email address prepare statement dot set string pass three and finally we need to pass the country so country spelling is mistake take here so what we'll do we'll rename the country variable okay let's execute this statement let's call the execute update statement here in order to execute this paper statement execute update alright then let's write a catch block and just print the exception here that's it so what we have done we have created insert user method which will insert a user into a user's table so let's similarly create a update user so let me quickly create update user method So here you can see update user method uh, it has a users user object as a parameter and again we are performing the same steps like we are getting the connection object we are creating a paper statement and we are passing update SQL statement here I, and uh, we are just uh, providing the values for this placeholders and we are executing this execute update method and if the records are greater than zero then we return this updated account so this is very similar to insert user method all right so let's go ahead and let's uh, write the method to get a user by id so let me quickly write this uh, method and let me explain you so here is the select user method so this will select a user by id alright and look at here we are following the same steps so we first establish a connection and then we create a prepare statement and here we are passing this select user by id statement and we are providing a placeholder for id and we are executing this prepare statement so in case of insert and update we are using execute update method but uh, here we are using execute query method because we want a result set right so that's why we need to call this execute query method it will return a result set so look at here and once we got the result set then we can extract the values or a rows from this result set and let's just iterate a result set in a while uh, loop and we can get a column values here and we create a user object and we pass name email country to the user object and then we return this user object pretty simple right great now let's write a method for select all users so let me just copy this code here so which is almost similar let me zoom it so 
so let me re re rename this method select all users no need to pass any id so let's create a array list list user users equal to new array list and we add users to the array list here and finally we return users and uh, provide a list of user as a return type now we need to get a id column value here get int just pass id great now we have developed select all users method which will return a list of users from users table now it's time to create a delete user method right so let me quickly write the delete user method and let me explain you so here is the delete user method and we need to pass the id and again we are performing the same steps we first get a connection object and then we create a prepare statement object and we pass the sql statement here that is the delete uh, users sql statement and we set the values for placeholder and we are calling execute update method and uh, this will return a number of rows deleted it's pretty simple and it's almost similar to insert and update users method so this completes our DAO user DAO implementation so what we have done we have created insert user update user select user by id select all users and delete users so these are the database crude operations for users table great so let's have a look into the next step so next step is we need to so next step we create a user servlet and we define all the all the you know crude methods uh, which will handle a web request that is uh, create user or update user delete user and select all, all user all right let us see how to implement it so right click on web package new and uh, create a servlet and let's name it as a user servlet and notice here we are using at web servlet annotation so this is the default uh, url pattern for this servlet so i will remove this because i i, I want to handle uh, all the requests in a single servlet so i will explain you a bit later next uh, let me remove this all the unwanted code okay now we'll be uh, you know calling user dao methods so let's create a object of the user dao class here private user dao user dao and then let's create this object inside a constructor great now what we'll do we'll handle all the requests in a single method that is in a do get method okay let me define this method above and uh, what i will do i will call this do get method and let's handle all the requests in a do get method itself 
ओके सो देर आर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ एक्शंस लाइक न्यू क्रिएट न्यू यूजर और अपडेट यूजर और एडिट यूजर डिलीट यूजर लिस्ट यूजर सो लेट मी क्विकली क्रिएट अ स्विच स्टेटमेंट फॉर दिस एक्शंस so uh, here i have created a switch case statement with a skeleton to handle all the request such as slash new insert delete edit update so these are the request we are going to handle and we'll write a separate method to handle these request and we get a action from the request object by using get servlet path all right let's go ahead and let's first handle a new uh, request so let me quickly create a private method here with show new form and inside a show new form method we are just creating a request dispatcher object and we are forwarding request to the user hyphen form dot jsp page it's very simple so whenever we uh, when, whenever we call this uh, URL, it will forward uh, you know request to the user hyphen form dot JSP page, and we can call this method from this case. And here we need to pass the request and response objects. So now we have handled new web request now it's time to write a code to handle insert web request so i will quickly write the code to handle this insert uh, web request and i will explain you okay so here is the insert user method private method and uh, and we are just extracting the uh, user details such as user uh, name email country from the request object and we are creating a user object here and we are passing a name email country to the constructor and we are calling insert user method of user DAO object and uh, we just uh, call this insert user method to save this user to the database and then we we redirect to the list request here if the li if list is not there we and then we write in a default section here so i will show you that a bit later so this is the uh, method to handle insert user request So it's a pretty simple so just to, we need to so just to we need to uh, you know uh, uh, retrieve all the user form details from the request object and we create a user object and we pass that user object to the insert uh, user method to save this user object into a database pretty simple so next is we need to write a code to handle the delete request so let me quickly write the code and let me explain you so here is the delete user method uh, which uh, we just need to get the id from the request object and we call the corresponding delete user method in order to delete this user from the database pretty simple so once the user is deleted from the users table then we redirect to the users list page so this is how we can handle a delete request and just pass here the request object and response and just surround it by try with resource try and catch block now let's uh, handle the edit web request 
so in case of edit just we need to return or uh, we need to just dispatch a request to the user from gsp page so let me quickly write the code and let me explain you so here is the show edit form so first we get a user object by using select user method and then we we pass this user object to the request object using set attribute and we forward this user object to the user hyphen form or gsp page so so we pass this user object for editing on this page so from this page we can edit the user and we can you know uh, submit the user and that will be again updated in a users table so it's pretty simple right so look at here we get the id from the request object and we got a user object by id and we create a request dispatcher object and we forward that user object to the user hyphen form dot js page it's very simple let me call this method from slash edit action and here we need to pass the request and response objects let me enclose my try and catch block now let's implement update so let me quickly write the code and let me explain you so here is the update user so in case of update uh, we are doing the same thing like we are retrieving all the user details from the request object using get parameter method and we are again creating a user object and just we are using or we are calling update user method and we are passing this user object to the update user method and this update user method will update the user uh, you know details to the users table and then we redirect to the list page it's pretty simple and let me call this method from the action here inside a switch case statement the request response now let's implement a default so if the actions are not present in a switch case uh, case then it will go to the default statement so in a default uh, section we basically forward request to the users list page so here is the list user method So basically we fetch all the users from the users table and then we set these list of users to the list user uh, key using set attribute method of request object and we just forward this request to the user hyphen list or js page all right it's pretty simple list user method and just we call from the default section a request a response great now we have you no know, developed all the logic to handle a web request in a single servlet now let's have a look to the next step so the next step is we need to create a gsp pages that is user list dot gsp page and user form dot gsp page and the url page so let's go ahead and let's uh, create these gsp pages quickly so notice here inside a servlet we have passed here gsp page names but we have not yet gsp pages are created so let's go ahead and let's create these gsp pages so right click on web content folder new and uh, select gsp file and give a name as user hyphen form dot gsp and let's go ahead and let's create one more gsp page and name it as so 
user list or gsp page and let's create a error dot gsp page now error dot gsp and let me replace this error dot gsp page code with the exception dot get a message so if there are any exceptions occur then that exception will be shown on this page and this exception object is an implicit object in a gsp so we need to give this error page uh, you know configuration in web.xml let me show you how to do that so let me open the web.xml uh, file so basically while creating this eclipse dynamic web project we need to uh, you know choose the option for web.xml but uh, in our case we haven't uh, chosen the web.xml uh, you know option so don't worry just create a web.xml file inside a web dynamic folder like this and inside a web.xml we need to configure the error phase like this okay so any exceptions occur in a our application then that will be the exception will be you know populated on this JSP page simple right so let's design a user form.jsp page now so let me quickly write the code and let me explain you so here is the code so uh, i don't want to uh, you know take a much of the time so i have just written the code here and let me explain you so anyways i am going to host the source code of this tutorial on my github repository so so you can able to get the code from there so look at here we are using bootstrap css framework and the version for bootstrap is 4.3.1 and here we are using cdn link and this is the header so inside the header we are just uh, you know uh, providing a link users link so whenever we click on users then it will call the list and this list will be handled in a servlet and this is the user form and uh, this user form will be uh, uh, will provide two functionalities one for insert and another for object update so if the user object is null then uh, the form acts as a insert a user form and if user object is not null then we can use this form for update so based on the condition we are just showing uh, the text here so if the user object is not null then we show edit user text if the user equal to null then we show the add new user text and this is a very simple form fields like for a user name e user email user country and here we are using uh, you know bootstrap css classes like form control and form group etc great so here we can enter username user email user country and uh, we uh, we submit the form then this request will be sent to the servlet based on the action this uh, request will be handled in a servlet for example in a user servlet if the action is update then this here update user request will be handled here and if the request is if the action is insert then this will be handled here all right so this is pretty simple flow so let's design a user list dot uh, gsp page quickly so here is the uh, gsp code for user hyphen list or gsp page so look at here the same uh, logic we have written we have included bootstrap min dot css file here we have provided cnd link so you can also download uh, bootstrap css files from the official bootstrap website locally and you can keep the bootstrap css files in a project and you can give a path okay 
so to quickly demonstrate this web application I am just using CDN links here and this is the header so inside header we we can use a uh, bootstrap uh, you know bootstrap CSS classes in order to design the header uh, and uh, we can provide a links like here so this is the user link so once we click on users link it will navigate to the users list page and this is uh, the table so this is the bootstrap table so we are applying the css classes to this table here and uh, inside table we will have a columns id name email country and actions and here are the rows uh, our value for the columns for example here is the list user and we are iterating over a list user and we are uh, showing uh, the users here and this, look at here this is, a, this is the action so edit and delete and we are passing uh, values to the id like this okay and we are using jstl uh, for each tag here uh, in order to iterate over list of users so this list user we got from the servlet so at a servlet so look at here so we fetch all the users from the relational database table and then we keep these users in a list user uh, key uh, in a, a request object and then we get these values from the request object in a JSP okay so we can use this uh, J, you know JSTL uh, syntax to get a list of users and we can iterate and we can show the list of users like this it's pretty simple uh, user list JSP page Now let us see uh, how to deploy this application and let us see the demo so in order to deploy this application so first you need to configure uh, apache tomcat server in eclipse id and just right click on the project run as a runnel server and uh, hit finish so let's wait for a moment it will take a couple of seconds to deploy perfect now our application is up and running let me just copy this link and let's open a browser and in a new tab just hit this link yeah here we go look at here the screen and click on add new user and just enter the form here username as ramesh43 email ramesh24 gmail.com and select country india and save so here we go so let me add one more user tony stark tony at the red gmail.com us so second record is added let me add one more record demo uh, i add john and email id is john at the red gmail.com my country as us and save it yeah so we have added three users to the users list now let's go ahead and let's see how to edit so just click on edit button here and let me edit this user so i give just name as a ramesh and uh, i update the email id and i will just give ramesh at the red gmail.com and i save it yeah here we go so this uh, ramesh user is updated successfully and let's go ahead and let's delete this user yeah and let me delete this this one also so this is how we can add the new user we can edit the user we can delete the user and we can list out the users all right so i hope uh, you got some idea how to develop a web application using gsp server gdbc and mysql database so let us see the next step so blog post and source code on github so i have already written a write-up tutorial on this uh, topic and you can 
find the blog post on my website and also I have host the source code of this tutorial on my github repository so I'll be providing a link uh, for blog post as well as the source code on github repo so that anytime you can check it out I hope uh, uh, you found this tutorial useful and uh, subscribe to our channel uh, whenever I will publish a new videos you will get updated thanks for watching I will see you in the next video